Welcome to SVL Free News and Views for Wednesday, January the 2nd. It's Happy New Year. It's 2019. It's hard to believe that 2018 is in the books, but we want to thank our sponsors who uh, started with us last year. Randy Marion, Piedmont Healthcare, Mitchell College, Key to Escape, The Escape Room, uh, Fast Fields, Statesville YMCA, Blue Harbor Bank, and Crossroads Cycling, and also Piedmont Healthcare. So thank you all for supporting us uh, during 2018. We look forward to 2019. We want to start off the year this time. I'm down at City Hall. We want to talk to Mayor Costi Cute about everything that's been going on in the last year. We talked about the Vance Hotel, the airport, uh, regional development, the new uh, service center for the, uh, the police department, and the uh, fire the, the fire department, so a wide-ranging interview to kind of get you started for 2019. So let's take a listen to Mike Furman and Mayor Costi Cute. Thanks, Brian. I'm here with uh, Mayor Costi Cute in uh, Statesville City Hall. Mayor, thanks for joining us. Thank you very much, and Happy New Year to you and your family and the listening audience and viewing audience. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have a great uh, 2018 for the show. Our viewership's up, readership's up on our, our website, and uh, we're really looking forward to 2019. And, Glad to kick off the new year with you on our show. You were on our first show, I think you remember, and so it seems fitting to start the new year with you as our guest. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, 2018, uh, probably not quite as uh, volatile uh, as 2017. <laughs> Might be one way to look at it for the city, but definitely some, some highlights. Let's start with uh, our discussion by talking about some of the tangible things. Uh, maybe the airport's a good place to start. I know that's an, there's a lot of work going out, on out there. And, People aren't out there very often. They might not really realize what's happening and why that's important to the city. It's it's the hidden jewel and it's the economic driver. And once everybody understands that, they have a better appreciation for it, whether they're on the council or in economic development or just members of the community. Um, we're finishing up uh, the South Parallel Taxiway, and people say, well, "What's that all about?" It's a it's ten million dollars, all federally funded, and just to simply state what's going on, almost all the aircraft is located to the south of the runway. Mm -hmm. And so all of Lowe's aircraft and Rubbermaid's aircraft when they were there and all the race teams and all that were having to cross an active runway to get in a taxiway to the north and come back in to go out. So okay. it's very, very dangerous. So we got the federal funding, first eight million bucks and then another 1.85 million, so nearly $10 million and they're finishing that up so all those planes will access uh, directly to the, to the runway. Uh, so we're very, very excited about that and that's gonna be a huge driver of economic development because um, Victory Air, uh, others have just expanded their fleets out there and so we're in an upward trend up there at the airport. We also received a grant that's, uh, we bought some land um, a year or so ago, 33 acres for additional corporate hangar development. Mm -hmm. And we got an $800,000 grant to do the grading so that the pads will be ready, site ready there. We're a little bit short on the funding, so we're trying to chase down the last half a million dollars, but the council is committed to finishing that project mm -hmm. as well. That'll really open up things. And then the other thing that's exciting to me, and I think that most of the council members, is we received a grant 50-50. Uh, We're putting up half the money and uh, CARPO, our regional transportation organization, putting up the other half to build a road to the south side of the, uh, out of the south side of the airport so that we can access areas to the south to, to get the Charlotte market more uh, in close proximity mm -hmm. to our airport. The way it's been having to go now, you've had to come all the way north come up in on Bethlehem Road or Airport Road to access the airport. Now you won't have to do that. You'll be able to do that from the south. So those are three huge projects out there that are not really visible to most citizens because it's a little bit remote from the day-to-day -day activities of the city of Statesville. But we're excited about that, and they are going to be huge economic drivers as we move forward. And do you envision all of those being completed this year? Um, Pretty close. I don't think the road will be completed, but the South Parallel Taxiway and the hangar development area should be finished this year for sure. Okay. All right. Well, uh, the Vance Hotel was in the news a lot in 2018. Uh, unfortunately, it looks like the, your developer isn't going to uh, be in on the project. Uh, you know, without going into uh, all the details, uh, Tell us why you think that fell through and then what you think the future is for the banks. 
Well, um, you said unfortunately, and, and I, I don't think unfortunately is the right word because it, we reached a conclusion that that effort was not the right effort for the hotel. Uh, as people have said, we've only got one shot to get it done. So let's get it done right. And I think what, the, I think what pushed things over the edge is uh, we reluctantly spent about $15,000 with some consultants to say, what do you think about the projects that's been presented? And they, they had some positives about it, but they had some negatives. Mm -hmm. And when we took it back to Richard Angino of Third Wave, uh, a number of things have happened. Um, one is interest rates are higher, construction mm -hmm. costs are higher. Um, I, I think we determined that the amount that he was requesting from the city was higher than should be contributed in those kind of pro projects. But the good news is, is that the council members who spoke and on all sides of the issue said, it's important for us to redevelop the Vance Hotel. So we haven't spent a great deal of money on that. I think people are uh, confused about that sometimes. We do have 70 parking places that we use on a daily basis for the citizens and the Civic Center and city employees and folks just in the downtown area. So we, we're getting value out of that. So the parking was included in the purchase of the building, right? And that was 400,000? 475, and that's, that's actually why we bought it. The council did not buy it for the Vance Hotel, and we thought we were getting the Vance Hotel as a positive appendage, <laughs> and that would sort of um, become a, a burden on the city. And uh, we're to the point now where we need to find the right development, uh, or the city's going to have to spend a whole bunch of money. The roof is shoddy, mm -hmm. but uh, the people that we're talking to now probably would do a lot of gutting of the interior. So the, the fact that it's not so attractive inside, which it hasn't been for some time, mm -hmm. it's not really as much of a detriment as you might imagine. But we're back to the drawing board and people have come forward. Some are just money seekers in my opinion. Some are people who said, ah, oh, I heard they're going to put a lot of money into it. Give me that money and I'll make something happen. Mm -hmm. But there are other folks with real legitimate um, interests um, all across the board. Back to a hotel, uh, residential, office. Uh, one, one of the things of interest to me, particularly now, is and we were told this several years ago, but I think there was more of an inclination that it needed to be single family residential at that time mm -hmm. that maybe is not there now. But the, the one guy who seems to be a front runner in terms of uh, hotel redevelopment has said, this is the only place to have a boutique hotel in downtown Station. Mm -hmm. You can have apartments or condominiums anywhere. And that this was built as a hotel and it's meant to be a hotel and the time now is to understand that and to go forward with a you know, 60 to 65 room hotel. So we'll see, 2019 I hope will be it. We've spent a lot of time on it, but fortunately we haven't spent a lot of money. And at least the spending of the time has, has not solidified us as a council as to what the project sh might be, but it has solidified us as a council that there should be a project that renovates the hotel. Okay, now also on the horizon is the construction of the new Municipal Services Center in South Statesville. I think that's going to be right near Amity Hill Road, right? It is. It's just uh, just to the south of, Am of uh, where Amity Hill and Highway 115 c converge, I guess. And, and the vision for that is, uh, I think, to move the patrol division there. You would have, uh, you'd move Station 1, Fire Department there. What else would be in that uh, so The county uh, would locate an EMS branch there as well. They apparently have a, an idea, which I think is a good idea, which is to decentralize EMS and to locate places strategically mm -hmm. around the county. And they have from the start said we'd like to be a tenant or purchase our part or do something mm -hmm. like that. So it's a it's a it's a monstrous complex. It's a it's way more than when we built Station Four out on mm -hmm. uh, by, you know on. Uh, uh, out East Broad Street Extension. And, so, and the architect is working on that or design? It's, it's pretty much designed and uh, it will be taken to bid soon. Um, we, we voted um, uh, to go ahead, a majority vote to go ahead. Uh, it's going to be 12 to 14 million dollars I believe because it includes uh, a new road that will cut through the property as well, mm -hmm. and there's some realignment of White's Mill Road out there. But that's, that's on the horizon. It's seen as a catalyst 
another catalyst for the redevelopment of the south mm -hmm. uh, end of the city. You, you probably know that the, the real estate development arm of the housing authority purchased the strip mm -hmm. center out there mm -hmm. and they have big plans for its rehabilitation. As a matter of fact, uh, our new community uh, resource officer that we emp will employ soon after the first of the year will be located uh, in that complex. Mm -hmm. I think back where the Weed and Seed Coordinator was in that uh, old small freestanding bank building that was at the okay. front of that property. Okay. So we're looking forward to that and looking forward to that partnership with the Housing Authority and its affiliate. Uh, last question on that. How is the council going to pay for the, that new uh, service center? Well, Ralph is working on that. He wanted it, he had to get through whether or not we were going to, in fact going to do it. Mm -hmm. And uh, there'll be some consolidation of services that hopefully will save some money there. Mm -hmm. And again, and then we'll either have a partner in the county, either as a tenant or as a partial owner. And then we'll either have to, a um, combination of uh, fund balance and uh, loan, what, whatever. We haven't, we haven't seen how that'll be. Ho hopefully by the time of our retreat in February, we'll know how that might happen. Okay, let's move. Uh move forward a little bit and talk about uh, the council, the year of the council. Uh, you probably, in the early part of the year, cast more votes as mayor to break ties than in the rest of your tenure combined, I would I'll imagine. So. Um, and, and there was a sense, I think, of kind of a real divide in the council in the first half of the year. That seems to have eased a little bit. Um, I'm not sure what that's attributed to, but I think it's a good thing. I think the citizens probably want uh, the council to work together. It's good to have different ideas. Um, talk a little bit about what the experience has been like for you and, and, and the working relationship with the council and, and how you see that going forward. Well, the, my working relationship with the council has been good, and I won't take any of the credit for their, but, but I mean, just helping people understand topics that are under consideration is important and there are real differences of opinion about how growth should take place uh, there's one group that wants to build a lot of residential stuff and that the residential stuff will then um, lead to commercial and industrial there's another group that thinks you do it the other way um, and I don't know where we'll come down on that because there's that that seems to be the greatest philosophical division right now uh, both sides have compelling points. The fact of the matter though is that um, we have way more jobs available in Statesville and in Iroh County than there are people to fill them. Mm -hmm. So we're actually a net uh, immigration for jobs. Mm -hmm. So um, we need residential growth and we are getting residential growth but it's not in places again that we see on a daily basis. There are four subdivisions that are in the city of Statesville that are south of Statesville. Mm -hmm. One is Larkin, the Fox Den Golf mm -hmm. Course, and then others in that area. And there are a number of new residences that have been constructed in 2018, and they are um, 250 to $350,000 homes, and they have sold easily mm -hmm. and frequently. And so while there hasn't been great revenue growth yet in the city, I'm optimistic that that will lead to some revenue growth, but the people that don't necessarily support residential growth as the primary way to get going would say that it takes a very expensive home to support the services mm -hmm. that you get. Mm -hmm. And so we deal with that all the time. We had a great presentation from David Courier, our planning director, a couple of months ago where he took the other things other than ad valorem property taxes that are that help um, provide finances mm -hmm. from the individuals that live mm -hmm. in the city. Part is a power, Powell bill, which is our road repair. Um, part is sales tax, because you, as you know, part of the sales tax is distributed on a per capita mm -hmm. basis. So if you stay behind the curve per capita, you lose ground revenue-wise mm -hmm. on sales tax. So I think as we understand more that there are other things than just you pay for taxes in and you pay out for garbage and police and mm -hmm. fire and public works and recreation, then maybe there'll be some softening in that position. But right now there seems to be, that seems to be the biggest, um, where we're at loggerheads, I guess, if you would say philosophically. And, and I don't think either side is right and either side is wrong, but there has to be some compromise and we have to work forward on that. 
Uh, and, and again, there has been some softening of positions. Um, uh, for instance, the, the controversy over the flag that was raging for a while, mm -hmm. and, and I guess is still not over because we're, um, we have a flag at Camping World that's in violation of the current ordinance. But there was a vote that I made early on where it's, it's reported that I, I voted to keep the flag at the old size. Well, the reason I did that at the time was because there wasn't an alternative, and we were trying to broker a deal that would allow for a larger flag. And we, in fact, by a unanimous vote, a short time after that, uh, increased the uh, allowable flag size in the city from 96 square feet to 1,000 square feet. So we made an astronomical move as a council mm -hmm. to do that. But, uh, and we did that in response to the Camping World thing, and then they, they applied for a flag that would have complied, but then they constructed a flag that doesn't comply. And so it has, it has raised all the issues um, that, again, that they're, they're irreconcilable. One is the rule of law and the importance of the rule of law. The other is the importance of patriotism and our devotion to our flag, mm -hmm. and the fact that uh, there are a number of folks that believe the bigger the flag, the better, and as long as it doesn't cause any kind of um, safety issue, that it should be allowed. Both very, very honorable positions, and we're at loggerheads over that, and at some point we'll have to resolve that. But at, at that point in time, even though there were some people that supported the larger flag, excuse me, and some that would have liked to have kept it the same, we as a group brokered a deal mm -hmm. that was unanimously approved to have the thousand square foot flag. And to me, that's that's better government that way. You don't get everything you want, I don't get everything I want, but we get something better than what we had before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, 2018, uh, uh, we've seen some personnel changes uh, here in City Hall. Uh, the, the big one would probably be the new city manager, Ron Smith leaving uh, Central Line Council of Governments to come back to Statesville to work. Uh, we had the retirement of Lynn Smith and, and also Chief Barone's retirement. Um, just say a few words, I, I guess, about those transitions and how, they, how they've been and, and maybe if you see other changes on the horizon. Uh, well, we, well, first let me say that uh, the hiring of Ron Smith has been great. Uh, he had experience in our local government, so he understood Statesville and Iroquois County in a way that maybe others mm -hmm. did not. We've had great managers, but he brought a different focus to that. He's been uh, very engaging with the council and with the community, and uh, I think um, to a person the council would uh, be just as happy or happier of that hire than the day that we made it. Mm -hmm. So that we've got great leadership at the top. We lost a really, really good leader in Lynn Smith when she retired after 32 hours, 32 hours, 32 <laughs> years of service. And she's what I've called on numerous occasions the Statesville Horatio Alger story. Mm -hmm. She started as a clerk. She said, I filed papers and emptied the garbage when I started. And she actually, as you'll recall, served as interim manager mm -hmm. while we were between Larry Presley. And so that's going from the very bottom to the very top. And she was well respected and we will miss her Greatly, but fortunately, she has agreed to come back on a modest part-time basis after the first of the year and help us out in that department. Mm -hmm. So there'll be changes there in human resources, and there's been some reconfiguration by by Ron since he's been here. He has promoted uh, Ralph Staley to oversee finance, but not be the finance director, and also oversee some other departments. Mm -hmm. And he has promoted Scott Harrell to oversee public works, but to be in charge of other departments as well. Mm -hmm. So 2019 will be a good gauge of how that's going to work. Um, but we have a great staff. We have, uh, we have other people that have been here a long time and could retire at any time. But fortunately, we've been able to um, find suitable replacements, and I hope that will be the case too. Uh, Chief Barone, um, his retirement, um, Again, some people were sad, some people were happy. Um, he was, we knew when he was hired as chief that he wouldn't be here. Uh, he would just serve out the rest of his 30 years and then be gone. And perhaps that's not the best way to look at hiring folks that are gonna be short-termers. So that, you know, cause that means you're gonna go through a transition once again. Mm -hmm. Chief Only has done a heck of a job mm -hmm. in my uh, opinion. 
of healing some wounds that were in the community. Um, yet again, there's a, there's a little bit of a debate uh, as to whether it should be still the, you know, out with the old, in with the new. Um, and that's one side. The other side is only has distinguished himself during his career and mm -hmm. certainly in his time, uh, his tryout. Mm -hmm. um, so it's going to be difficult for the manager to make a decision. That is exclusively the manager's decision. Correct. Uh, the way it works here is the council doesn't pick the police chief, the council picks the manager. So if the manager picks somebody that a majority have told him they don't want, then his job might be in jeopardy, but the chief's job is not in jeopardy. And I think that very soon we will have the announcement uh, of a new police chief, and we will have the announcement of that community uh, resource officer develop, uh, in, uh, so that's the police liaison position. The police right. liaison that will be in the south, and, and so that's, that that will be chosen by the police chief. So mm -hmm. that's uh, that's even one step down from the manager. So um, I'm excited about that. Those will both happen early in 2019, and um, should be both very very helpful um, for the city. I'm happy to see that um, most of the most of the bridges that were damaged mm -hmm. um, through the election in 17 that, that brought some things to a head and uh, some of the actions that were, um, you know, that had to be patched up, have, have been patched up and the city is more actively involved in community endeavors in the police department, even though we were involved mm -hmm. before. Mm -hmm. And the chief only has implemented some of his own. So I think it's exciting times at the Statesville Police Department, whatever direction we go there. Now the, um, <clears throat> I know the police department and the fire department have both completed their accreditation or reaccreditation. Uh, well, the fire, fire has completed it. Police, mm -hmm. police is a multiple stage. Right. We've completed a phase, but we've got several phases. Okay. To go through. Okay. Uh, now, do those efforts uh, pay dividends in terms of recruiting and retaining officers? Well, and firefighters. Um, hmm, that's a good question. They pay dividends. I don't know that a guy coming to work necessarily says, well, State was accredited and Salisbury is not or whatever, mm -hmm. but uh, it part part of the focus of the process is to how do you how do you recruit and retain officers? Mm -hmm. So there is that indirect benefit. Um, the fire, as you'll recall, is currently accredited and they're seeking reaccreditation. Mm -hmm. And the reaccreditation panel was just here a couple of weeks ago and went through that. And they'll all tell you that it's not their job to come in and say you're doing this well, you're doing this poorly. Um, but it's a it's a good experience, um, just like it is for any of us to have an outside set of eyes to look at our operation. And generally speaking, we've got a very good fire operation and a very good police operation. The difference is it is way more difficult to recruit policemen than it is firefighters. Mm -hmm. And that's probably in large part the national uh, mm -hmm. dilemma that either policemen are viewed as overbearing or if not overbearing always in harm's way mm -hmm. that you're subject to being shot any day of the week and so what we've done is it's, it's worked pretty well we're, we're we're down a few officers but every every police organization in America is down a few mm -hmm. officers this problem is not um, specific to Statesville by any stretch of the imagination and what we did, and this was under Chief Barone's leadership a couple years ago, and Tom Souther, I think, heads up the program. But we, we, we pre-recruited folks, mm -hmm. and we said, we think you would make a good officer. Come talk to us. And once they got the psychological and the physical idea of how that person might pan out, we, the city, paid them to go to BLET. Mm -hmm. In exchange for that, we expected a two-year commitment back. Now. That has worked. Um, the concern from some members of council is that you're replacing people with some experience with people with no experience. And that's a very valid point. But in a lot of cases, the folks that we're hiring have military experience or they have security job experience. They have some things that are transferable and helpful but not necessarily prior police experience. But they also seem to have a connection to the community have a connection to the community and you got to get them somehow and I, I think it's better to have a guy with modest experience than nobody at all and so as an example 
Uh, I just swore in a new officer on the 28th at, at the end of last week. Mm -hmm. And in the audience were four of the graduates from the recent BLET program at Statesville, I mean at Mitchell, mm -hmm. that I will swear in in a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. And they, they, they're ones that we recruited and we paid for them to attend mm -hmm. BLET. But the other side effect is they became good friends with others. And so mm -hmm. Captain Souther went back to these four and said, who in the group would you want by your side mm -hmm. if you were in harm's way? And they all came up with another two or three, and so we're trying to recruit them as well. Mm -hmm. So it is a, it's an everyday process. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we're, we're, we're very excited about that. I don't, know what the, I don't know what the national answer to that will be, but it would appear that Statesville has done an okay job. Not, we're, we're not at full complement, but we're pretty close to being at full complement. Uh, and we, we are working on a career development plan that we think will provide incentives to keep folks here mm -hmm. and to bring them here, to make them, to help, hopefully uh, incentivize them to live in the city of Statesville so that it may be more difficult to leave the city of Statesville when another opportunity comes up. Okay. Well, we've covered a lot today. Wow. <laughs> Hope there are still people watching. <laughs> uh, Mayor, thanks so much for taking the time, and uh, good luck in the coming year, and, and good health. Thank you very much. Same to you. And thanks for uh, your support of the city and uh, the product that you're presenting to us every day. We appreciate that. Thank you. So there you have it, a good interview with uh, Mayor Costi Cute. We uh, are looking forward to 2019 with the city and all, your, all of our sponsors out there and hope you will turn in to, uh, tune in to Statesville Free News. Uh, sign up for your email edition at svlfreenews.com to get your email edition every morning at 5 a.m. So happy new year, folks, and we're here at 2019 and we look forward to, to serving everybody in Statesville and Iredell County with getting the news out always free, always local. So happy new year and I'll see you on Friday.